if you uh, teach or work with middle school or high school kids, there's this interesting tension in their lives between how none of them want to be different from each other. They all want to be belong to the same group, which maybe could be your classroom. And how they all want to be different from each other and they want to be recognized for their differences, which might also <laughs> be your classroom. This whole notion of differences comes up in all sorts of different places. Um, in our classrooms, we often try to teach a whole bunch of different kids the same thing in the same way at the same time. And that doesn't always work. As a matter of fact, more often than not, it just doesn't. Increasingly, we're preparing our kids for a world where historically they had to learn to do the same thing in the same way at the same time. But in the future, we need people who are going to solve much more complicated problems by doing different things in different ways at different times. Somehow that's got to be reflected in our classrooms. We see some of this on the internet. In, uh, in David Weinberg's book, Everything is Miscellaneous, he talks about when you're reading text online, peppered with hyperlinks, each of those hyperlinks is two things. Number one, it's a little act of kindness. It's, it's a way to invite someone to point someone away from maybe what you've written and go read what someone else wrote because they have a different way of looking at it. And, and that leads into the second thing, that each one of those links points to a different, a difference, a different point of view, a different lens through which someone looks at the same issue, or maybe a, a different issue entirely that has some tangential relation to what you're writing about. In Kathy Davidson's book, Now You See It, she talks a lot about difference and how that's actually how the brain wires for learning, that we attend to things that are different. When we're driving down the highway and it's just one straight road all the way down, city planners often deliberately put curves in the road so that there's a difference and we pay attention to the road. If we're doing the same thing all the time, we get bored and we stop paying attention. It's when there's differences that our ears perk up and our attention perks up. She says um, in her book, in the third chapter, which talks about classroom makeover, she gives examples of how in classrooms where things happen accidentally, the classroom routine is disrupted, which leads to uh, all sorts of distractions and then differences in the way the class works how that inspires deep kinds of learning uh, and, and actually motivates kids to learn more, learn deeply, to solve problems on their own and also in collaborative ways. So this whole idea of differences, teaching kids maybe the same subject, the same course material, so that each different kid learns by doing something different at a different time, maybe in a different way in your class. How can you structure your class to do that? because it's really all about the differences in the way we teach and the way we learn. We resent in professional development sessions being taught the same thing at the same time. Our students might feel the same way too about the way they're sitting in our classrooms. What do you think?